1960s, when I was in college, I was studying international economics. Uh, the gold price at the time was $35 an ounce. And uh, I was taught by various Keynesian professors that when the U.S. government stopped supporting gold at $35 an ounce, it would crash to its uh, uh, useful value, which was $7.5. Well, anyway, um, graduated from school, um, joined a, a big New York bank, was working in Asia, where I actually lived most of the 1970s. But after the U.S. government stopped, quote unquote, supporting gold at $35 an ounce in 1971, instead of crashing, it kept climbing. And when it got to $50 an ounce, in fact, that was considered to be a ridiculous price, I sort of stepped back and said to myself, well, either gold is very overvalued, or what I learned in school was completely wrong. And I can tell you now that what I learned in school was completely wrong. Um, it took me a period of years, um, but I basically re-educated myself as to how the world really works and what gold really is. And I'd like to distinguish, and I'm going to follow this up a little bit this afternoon in my lunch, uh, luncheon presentation, but we use the terms money and currency interchangeably when in fact they actually mean different things. Money is a mental tool, like the ability to speak is a mental tool. And we use money for economic calculations, so when we go into the marketplace to fulfill our needs and wants, we can communicate value to other people in the marketplace and ultimately buy or sell depending on you know, what we intend to do in that one particular day. What the, um, so in that sense, money doesn't have any history. It does the same thing today it did a thousand years ago. What does have a history is currency. Currency evolves and changes and becomes more efficient over time. And this is actually a good thing because if you can reduce the cost of commerce and payments um, using uh, a currency in commerce and making payments in commerce, uh, that, that, that is a cost. If, but if you can reduce the cost of commerce by creating a, a more and more efficient currency, the better off society will be because after all, if we can reduce the impediments of commerce, if we can create more opportunities for people to interact with one another um, without impediments, the better off society is because the more interaction creates, the more commerce creates, the more good services, and ultimately raises mankind's or humankind's you know, standard of living. So currency evolves and becomes more efficient over time. Uh, you know, it started out as very rudimentary uh, uh, assets of one form. Uh, eventually, it started to be uh, formed into coins. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton invented the idea, came up with the idea of being milling around the edge of the coin so that would, you could see if the coin was clipped or not. Um, and currency continued to evolve and evolve. And today what we use as currency is largely electronic. We don't use um, uh, a lot of physical metal. In the United States, for example, of the total money supply of dollars, approximately 93% is electronic money or what I call deposit currency. It's currency in a banking system that moves by check, wire transfer, you know, electronic funds transfer, or plastic cards. And 7% is actual physical metal. Now, what that basically shows is that both physical, um, physical metal or physical paper, um, because we're obviously talking about fiat currency, we're not talking about any kind of tangible asset, but it shows that both currencies are needed and both are complementary. Um, and there are problems when you're using physical metal in terms of making payment um, and things of that nature. So, my, what, studying, um, I think back to the 1970s and studying money and banking, I realized that currency was different than evolves. And in 1974, there was a major bank crisis. Um, you may remember the, the name was Herstadt Bank, which is a West German bank, and it brought the international monetary system to its knees. Frankly, the National Bank collapsed that same year. It was the largest U.S. bank failure in history. Um, and as I was in this process of re-educating myself, I wanted to understand what caused the bank collapse and if I could come up with a solution. It took a number of years, but I actually came up with the idea of what is now real money back in 1979. The technology didn't exist. Transatlantic phone calls were expensive. Um, the, I came up with the idea in February of 79, and I bought my first um, personal computer in September of 1979, which was an Apple II Plus. Um, <laughs> some of you may remember that, a 45K of memory. Um, and so, you know, the idea just wasn't possible because the technology didn't exist. But my study of currency, my study of money and currency, made me come to understand that currency was evolving and would become more efficient in the future. And secondly, that because gold was money, gold and silver were money, they would have a role to play in an electronic way. So essentially, um, what I did is came up with the concept of digital currency, even though the internet wasn't even around then. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, this is powerful. I'm going to keep, keep thinking about this idea. I never thought it would happen in my lifetime, but I said, well, you know, who knows? Maybe 
began to create a company based around that particular idea. And uh, sure enough, in 1998, we created the company and we launched in 2001. We're now safeguarding $2.2 billion of assets for 20,000 customers located in 100 countries around the world. But here's the important point I'd like to conclude on this. And this is the whole key to currency. And it's particularly important when you're looking at gold and silver. When you're using gold or silver as a form of payment, you go into a shop, you put a coin down on the table, and you go away from that shop with some good or some service. There is no lingering obligation. The asset is exchanged for an asset. You're actually extinguishing the exchange at the moment that those two assets you know, exchange for one another. The shopkeeper gets the, uh, the coin, and you get the, the good from the shopkeeper. With what we have now, with various forms of electronic money, you have payment risk. This is what Airstrap was, was all about back in the, the 70s. If I go and buy something with, with any kind of uh, uh, paper money or any kind of um, uh, representation of paper money, like a Visa card or a check or anything like that, the exchange is not extinguished until the shopkeeper takes the dollars he receives and ultimately buys an asset for it. But until he actually takes those dollars and buys an asset with them, he has payment risk. And payment risk is a huge cost. This is what causes banks to be too big to fail and creates all kinds of other issues with regard to governments impeding on the monetary system. So what my idea uh, basically was, was that well, we need physical metal for some transactions, but I want to do business from here in Utah with someone in uh, China. How am I going to ship coins over to that guy? Well, the answer is you use electronic gold. The gold stays in a vault, safe and secure, regularly audited to make sure that the weight of gold and silver in the vault is exactly equal to the quantity of gold and silver uh, owned by the customers within gold money. And you take out your iPhone and you click gold from your holding to the holding of the guy in China and you have a transaction that's immediately completed. It's a digital gold coin. And because if you're not actually um, fabricating the coin, you can make that payment any amount that you want. It, we go down to three, we use grams and three decimal places, but we could actually take it down to a half. Uh, it didn't be that precise in terms of how many atoms and uh, what an atom of gold is worth. Uh, but the, the point is, is that currency is evolving, uh, it's changing, and just like we moved substantially from um, coins originally to banknotes, to checkbooks, to wire transfers, to plastic cards, it's evolving yet again. And with regard to gold and silver, I think the essence of the way it's going to evolve in the future uh, is that digital gold um, uh, currency, which is what we invented and have four US patents on, uh, is likely to be the popular method for people to use uh, uh, cross-border global transactions. So there's going to be a role to play for physical metal, coins and things like that, particularly in the local community. And as the world becomes more and more global, I think there's going to be a major role to play for digital